Our third speaker in the session is uh, Fergus Casey. Uh, he's the R&D director at Synopsys, where he heads up uh, all of the, the portfolio of ARC, CPU, and DSP uh, product development. Uh, so, Fergus, uh, I see you're sharing your screen. We've got your camera, and I think you're unmuted, so we'll turn it over to you. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Yeah, my name is uh, Fergus Casey. I'm the R&D director, Arc Processor IP. Generally based in Mountain View, I'm presenting from my home here in uh, Danville, California. So over the next uh, 20 minutes or so, um, we'll give an overview of the some of the uh, challenges that are uh, facing us with respect to semi-autonomous autonomous vehicles. Today it's ADAS. In the future, we're moving towards a semi-autonomous uh, uh, perspective. And then look at the, uh, the required architecture uh, to make those designs safe and secure. Uh, looking into the performance and safety requirements for today's ADAS designs, exploring some of the uh, technical challenges. Some of those technical challenges are already uh, alluded to by uh, Avi in a previous uh, session. And then overlaying some of those uh, challenges uh, with the perspective uh, of safety, where really safety is and needs to be the cornerstone uh, for automotive to be successful, not just in ADAS, uh, but also onwards towards the path for uh, fully autonomous. Uh, give an overview of the adapted SOC architecture from a safe and secure perspective, look at where we are today, and then look at uh, the road ahead. You know, autonomous vehicles is not uh, something new. In fact, we've been dreaming about this uh, eventuality for the best part of 70 years. This is a picture I've taken from the internet, pretty cool picture, a couple enjoying um, the good life driving down the freeway, uh, playing a game of Scrabble. Uh, the dream was there in the 50s. Um, dream got a little bit more real in the 60s with uh, real evaluations, real experiments, uh, no fewer than 1300 as claimed in, in one particular technical article uh, on the topic of autonomous vehicles. Certainly investment uh, started to flow into autonomous vehicles in, in 2010, um, particularly driven by Google and the likes of uh, Tesla. Back in uh, 2010, Google's claim was, we're still a decade away from uh, making this uh, technology uh, commercial. Roll on 10 years later, and I guess the question remains, are we any closer to that uh, goal or dream of autonomous vehicles? And something to put in your, in your brain as you're listening to me uh, uh, present, uh, how happy would any of us be uh, for our kids to be out on, the, uh, out on the driveway while there's autonomous vehicles driving around our, our neighborhood? Do we think we're there yet? Uh, what, is, what is left to do? What are the challenges? But certainly, you know, the case for autonomous vehicle is, is, is pretty evident. 92% uh, of fatal accidents are caused by bad driving. Uh, only 8%, and still maybe 8% is, is quite high, is caused uh, by technology. So certainly from our engineering um, generations perspective, whether we're processor designers or SOC architects, uh, our goal is to reduce the fatality count uh, through the use of advanced safety features assisting the driver, but ultimately leaving to uh, more full control of the system of the vehicle as it executes down the, uh, uh, down the path. And that pretty much aligns with uh, Google's vision and Google's goal back in 2010, where their uh, purpose was to uh, improve the safety on roads through the uh, advanced technologies. So indeed, looking at some of those uh, some of those challenges, uh, let's look at just three examples of a, of pedestrians crossing the road. So yes, today we have the technology to um, uh, to detect an object, uh, to predict the object's um, path as it uh, traverses the uh, the camera. Uh, but in these uh, three instances, uh, pedestrians are not equal. There is no algorithm to calculate uh, pedestrian behavior. Detection, recognition of objects um, uh, is good, uh, but it will not be enough. A good example here is detection of that child uh, on the road. Uh, this is a very different uh, safety critical um, scene because it's surrounded by his children or by his uh, parents uh, versus a scene where the, the child is, is on its own. So how are our, um, our computers, our, our uh, PCs, our, our um, um, processors dealing with uh, such um, uh, such um, uh, such problems. 
So indeed, uh, today, um, looking at current AI technologies uh, applied for pedestrian detection and tracking, step one, um, object uh, detection using faster or CNN uh, ResNet type um, uh, processing CNN graphs. Uh, step two on the object tracking uh, using more feed forward neural network, uh, network um, uh, graph classification, where we're predicting uh, the next uh, step uh, for the next frame uh, of, of that particular object uh, through to multi-object uh, detection and, and tracking, but also the sensor fusion of those objects to uh, build a coherent and understandable picture from a safety perspective so clear decisions can be, uh, can be made. Taking us to um, panoptic segmentation, you know, as I mentioned in the early days of computer vision, everybody was happy uh, with the fact that we can detect a cat, we can detect an object, and, and we, can, we can handle face and gesture recognition uh, reasonably well. Uh, but as mentioned, the object really needs to be understood within the context. Uh, considering the foreground object, um, together with the background scene, uh, all within a single neural network um, graph. In a nutshell, uh, panoptic segmentation is that unification of scene segmentation together with uh, object uh, detection and tracking. And it's really using such improvements in our NN graph capabilities it is an, at least a stepping stone into interpreting the objects in a particular scene, a fundamental requirement uh, towards our path towards uh, autonomous vehicle. And note, let, let's be clear, this type of capability requires significant amount of uh, processing uh, uh, horsepower, um, quite um, an order of magnitude higher than even the, the, most, um, uh, the most performant risk processor. So indeed, looking at some of those uh, performance uh, type requirements, a uh, single processor, uh, core achieving a vector DSP NN graph uh, processing engine achieving over one teraops per second would have the ability to uh, detect an object as it's uh, crossing the road. Uh, Multi-core, uh, multi-object detection takes us into the uh, teraops and then the sensor fusion capability where you're merging uh, both uh, radar, LIDAR, vision type applications is most definitely in the uh, the high 100 tera op cycles, pretty much uh, aligning with, um, with Avi from Halo's presentation um, where significant performance is required. I do agree, uh, not all tops are equal. You're really needing to look at the Mac utilization and the Mac utilization relative to the power uh, output uh, when assessing these numbers and your particular uh, use cases. Regardless, um, independent of the power and performance requirements, uh, none of this will be achievable from an automotive uh, autonomous driving perspective without the need for functional safety, whether it's redundant safety uh, sensor channels or it's inbuilt safety mechanisms uh, that are continuously monitoring the system health. Uh, so in this slide, we, we look at the, the three uh, fundamental cornerstones of uh, functional safety, systematic faults, uh, these are bugs introduced um, by our, our engineers as we're developing processors, developing SOCs, introduced through the development cycle. Uh, then we have uh, environmental uh, bugs such as permanent hardware faults and random uh, transient hardware faults. Permanent hardware faults uh, occur through the wear and tear of the device over its lifetime. Transient hardware faults, um, very much a lot more difficult to capture through the safety mechanisms, um, will occur uh, through environmentally caused by soft error bit flips. In order for a design to be uh, safe uh, from a 26262 perspective, we need to address, address all of these three areas. So uh, looking at uh, what it is that is ASIL, uh, Automotive Safety Integrity Level, uh, quickly going through this as uh, it's a bit of a spaghetti of uh, letters. It's all about the probability of exposure. It's all about the controllability by the driver and the severity of the failure. From this, we can objectively determine what is the required ASA level. The OSE ASA levels as was presented by um, my colleagues on, on previous, previous slides. Um, 
as we move towards a level two, uh, which is assist to level two plus level three, more of that control is going from the driver to the system. As a consequence, uh, that control is, uh, is moving to the system. As a consequence, the ASIL level is increasing. So where previously for typical radar applications, 2015 type devices, most of those uh, applications were ASIL B level. As we move the controllability to more towards the, uh, the machine, um, the level of safety is dramatically increasing. And leveraging on um, our uh, many, many years of best in class uh, ARC processors, embedded processors together with many years of quality and safety culture, uh, we've introduced uh, a broad range of functional safety processors over the last two to three years, uh, going from a, a small efficient uh, three-stage pipeline processor, the EM22FS, to the more high performance 10 stage uh, processor HSFS, combining risk and DSP capabilities, then moving into parallel DSP processing engines such as the VD, VD, VPX FS, uh, focused on radar, LIDAR, powertrain, and sensor, uh, into the embedded vision processor, uh, dealing with the combination of computer vision together with uh, neural network processing capabilities. And it's really through this standardization of safety architectures, we can reduce our customers' time to integration and final SOC certification. Uh, you know, safety is all about standardization, 26262, and that's really what we, uh, has been our mantra in ARC, in Synopsys, uh, for a good number of years. And indeed, we, we can see the commonality of those safety mechanisms as it's um, proliferating across the processor architectures uh, uh, within our community. Um, includes common safety mechanisms, includes common uh, metaware tool chains and functional uh, safety software stack. Looking at the resulting SOC safety architecture, uh, application specific uh, safety ready processors uh, tailored to the application, whether it's a, a safety manager, whether it's a risk based multi-core processor such as a HS or, or, or an ARM core, um, whether it's a, v, a VPX, a vector processing, parallel processing unit, uh, or uh, it's uh, memory interfaces, um, uh, MIPI, uh, LPDDR. Um, together with uh, the standard application processors is the, um, the safety infrastructure, a safety manager to manage the safety boot flow while monitoring the SOC for safety escalations in boot time and in mission mode. A star memory hierarchic, hierarchic system to complete the required diagnostic on the IP and memories, demonstrating that the fault metrics, whether it's ASLB, ASLC or ASLD, have been met before the vehicle moves into mission mode. And then an independent safety bus um, connected to the safety manager and the various safety IP relevant components uh, to communicate independently from the interconnect uh, to, in the case of a fault occurring in mission mode, delivering the freedom from interference required for 26262. And surely as night follows day, as day follows night, integration has happened in the desktop, in the mobile, it's happening in the, in the automotive as well where previously a component uh, was a discrete MCU safety manager. That safety manager is getting integrated into the ADAS uh, design autonomous SOC um, to reduce uh, cost, increase safety, uh, reduce wiring, and overall uh, reduce the, the failure uh, in time and the vehicle weight from a reduction of copper uh, cabling. Um, looking more towards the, uh, the safety features within uh, a typical uh, risk-based processor or HS or EM core, a combination of safety mechanisms uh, instantiated, architected from ground up together with the uh, processor, uh, ECC uh, on the memories, including address and data protection required for ASIL-C and ASIL-D, D for Delta uh, level support integrated memory protection units uh, to protect uh, the different mixed criticality uh, software functions executing on the processors, um, 
certified memory based uh, logic based as well as user programmable watchdog timers safety monitors safety bus as i alluded to on the previous slide all of which is certified to the highest uh, certification standard sgs2 sar certifying this uh, full compliance on both the systematic and the random certification within the 26262 uh, standard leading us to the layer on top of the uh, uh, of the processor architecture being the functional safe uh, software stack um, made up of a number of components delivering fully programmable um, safety management solution for our customers at the SOC level, a fault manager to manage the uh, fault escalations and priorities, a test manager to manage the diagnostic coverage checks of the SOC at boot time and in mission mode, working with that software test libraries or uh, software BIST to confirm that the stuck at faults uh, diagnostic coverage has been met, uh, together with the STLs themselves that are executed on each of the user application processors. Uh, all managed and run uh, on the safety manager with full integration into the various RTOSs and Autosar uh, OSs uh, required for, um, to, for uh, automotive processors. Um, leading us to the, the road ahead, um, 26262 covers quite well uh, environmental uh, failures and bugs introduced by uh, the system. What it does not address is malicious attacks. And we've seen this in recent, uh, in recent years through various uh, hacking experiments through malicious attacks where the hardware, the processors themselves, uh, can uh, can be injected with faults uh, or can be hacked to the point where we're corrupting the software execution. There are standards looking at this today, 21434. Uh, um, while that is in development, Synopsys continues to um, combine the capabilities of the safety uh, ready processors together with our secure IP, our secure technology, uh, building a T-Root HSM um, that sits to, uh, in unison with the safety manager, allowing the, the safe bring up and secure bring up uh, of the boot code on an ADAS design, and also then monitoring any activities uh, in mission mode. Managing the secure boot, managing the secure debug, indeed the key management and cryptography, and the authentication of the host uh, boot bootloader. So the combination of that uh, safety ready manager uh, together with the secure T-Root HSM processor gives you that safe and secure architecture that takes us through into today's ADAS design into tomorrow's semi-autonomous autonomous, uh, architectures. So in closing, humans are bad drivers um, and the role of technology is increasing uh, to improve our driver experience and reduce do that later. Um, our driver experience and reduce uh, yearly fatality, uh, fatalities. Reliability and functional safety are pretty much at the heart of what we need to, to deliver. And we can only be successful in L2+, plus, L level three and autonomous uh, vehicles through the combination of the required performance levels with the required level of safety. We can do that through state-of-the-art safety concepts and methodologies, a certified SOC safety management software, uh, combined uh, with um, uh, an SOC architecture uh, through our partners, through our customers, delivering to the requirements of autonomous vehicles. So hopefully that's um, uh, been a, a, a reasonable Thank update. You. Thank you. Thank you, Fergus.